So, what is reservoir resonance? What is, is a centrifugal blower? And what is organ pipe flutter? Well, the, fir the third one, I think, I can demonstrate. I can get on to Can you hear that wobbling? Do you want it again? <laughs> so, I've answered one question. That is organ pipe flutter. My research is, is all about organ pipe flutter. Basic parts of an instrument. Control. Obviously, his fingers. A resonator. Um, in this case, a piece of wood. And, obviously, a wind supply. Without the wind, it is dead. Um, so we look at organ. This is the control for the biggest organ in the world. 850 stops, 15 stops, sorry, 33,000 pipes. Seven keyboards, the top keyboard is rake, so we can just about play. The resonator, we can see here um, the bottom eight of the 32 foot 16, 32 foot um, open diapase of that same organ. And <coughs> you can see the principal parts of a, a pipe. The varying length from 10 meters speed length to this one here is about 10 meters. This is the business part here that the mouth. So we have uh, a distance we call a cut up. The scale is the width of the pipe. So we've got White pipes, white scale pipes, thin scale pipes. Strings, thin scale pipes, harmonics. Wide scale pipes, flutes, few harmonics. Important bit is the language. This is the body here. This is the... Why did it make Um, so this is the language here, and this is the total. So by the voice, first of all, the pipe's made by the pipe maker. It then goes to the voice, he manipulates this mouth area here to get the thing to sound right. And he'll change the cut up, he'll nick it to break the actual floor, and then he'll actually adjust the, um, the toe. The, the, um, of the mouth and the hole in the bottom there. The wind supply. So that's evolved from 16th century. Oh, yeah, the group of men all pushing down somewhere wind. So this was replaced by this kind of system here of reservoirs and feeders. Uh, <coughs> This is a hand-operated system for emergency, or alternatively, this has a water engine, two water engine. This reservoir here, and one spine, this one. This is a single rise reservoir sprung up. From there, we then went to, um, these became popular uh, originally, um, because there was no electricity, no gas, no water, that they were all operated, and then uh, war became um, developed in municipal um, areas. They then started to fit water engines, which were run off mains water pressure. The next jump was in fact the electric motor. And by just simple reciprocating things, with the electric motor, you've got this rotary movement. So you could actually drive a tank. Um, this is like a three cylinder version. Um, and so you connect a motor to this crank here, and there would be a feedback mechanism to vary the speed of the motor. Um, and these provided very, very smooth wind systems. <coughs> we then go to the earlier uh, low speed vibors. This is an early fan, so you can see it's a simple cruciform shape. 
um, with a motor on the other end and it spins round and shoves air around. This is a, a slightly improved version. It's a dating back to 1900. This is a slightly improved version. Um, the problem with these is they could only make them a certain size, otherwise they they couldn't balance them really. So there was a size, a maximum size, and you can only get about 50, sorry, 500 PA from each pressure from each. So if you wanted anything, you had to kind of at least join two together. So we've now got um, the early kind of form of uh, blower uh, run by electric motor. This is a, a simple uh, blowing plant now. So we've got the the blower here, several stages, there's the motor, there's the generator. Don't forget, these days, DC wasn't easy to produce. There were no switch mode power supplies, no liquid power supplies. So it was mainly by the generator. And the big organ that we saw earlier, that would consume about one or 2,000 amps at 15 volts. The air comes in here along each stage, and eventually we get 10 inches of water gauge here, um, which goes to this high pressure reservoir. And then we've got lower six going to the low pressure. Two simple forms of cutoff valves. Because now we've got a system where we've got an endless supply of air generated by the motor, um, we need somewhere to actually controlling how much air goes into the reservoir. When it gets full, you don't want it to continue and go through the roof. So there's a simple kind of valve, regulating valve, control valve. So this is a roll, simple roll line, which is inclined. And this is a simple guillotine valve. And then the third valve is an internal one. Uh, the early ones, the, the hand one uh, operated thing, there would be a little telltale on the top of the reservoir a series of pulleys, a bit of a brass weight, and you try and keep it between two places. So you. This is the feedback system here. So the motor is controlled by this here, and this operates this um, mm -hmm. pneumatic motor. As the pressure changes, the motor goes up and down, and it operates this stud rear stud. So, how common is organ pipe flutter? Well, I did a survey <coughs> and four basic sections. Details about the, the building, the organ, uh, the size of the building, the reverberation time, general information. This is the most important thing here. We looked at flutter on four parts uh, in the organ. And this was conducted by 83 tuners. They listened to the pipes at the soundboard just like you did, and they listen to the pipes in the body of the church. And from that, they then um, waited or gave, uh, used four descriptors to say whether there's no flutter, small amount of flutter, medium amount of flutter, or extreme flutter. The third thing we wanted to find out was information about the, the wind system, um, the size of the reservoirs, roughly knowing the um, height, build height of the reservoir and the wind pressure, you can work out the resonant frequency of the reservoir is. And we wanted to know a bit about uh, the kind of blows that they use, whether low speed or high speed. And the last thing we're interested in was tremulant detail because the tremulant, which is this um, forced uh, modulation, gives you a good idea of whether the wind system's um, going to modulate or not. This is a snapshot of the results. These are three tuners. Um, the, what we're looking for is green. So we've got the one pipe here, the open diapason, soundboard and in the body, the four foot principle, which is the, effectively the octave of that, stop flute, um, and a string. And they're all 1K, roughly, sound. So you can see that, uh, generally speaking, the uh, string seems to be seems to be the pipe that has 
least amount of clutter. Uh, and looking at that, you would then say, well, the stop flue is the one that has most. So you'd say the thin scale has got less clutter than the wide scale. <coughs> Brief summary of that, of what I've just said, that if you look at the string, uh, there's quite a large percentage of no flutter. And then if you look next to it, the eight foot stop flute, uh, you'll see that that's got the least amount of no flutter. And then the open die pattern, which is the next in width in scale. So the stop flute has got slightly more flutter than the fourth principle. So scale does have an effect. And there you can see for the um, four different grades of pipe and the summary of no flutter, slight flutter, um, medium flutter and extreme flutter. What is interesting about the survey is I didn't realise just how many organs had double rise reservoirs. And I'm sure a lot of other people who look at this information will say the same. Um, so of the organs that were in the survey had simple double rise reservoirs and that's probably goes back to when they were originally uh, constructed because they were the only kind of reservoirs once this kind of feeder system so we had a test set up made a test set up uh, the works in rams bottom a flutter making machine so basic elements test blower reservoir accelerometer on the top and the microphone and the pipe there and change how we pressurize the the air inside the reservoir i'd, I'd wait so we can add springs and a tremulant to actually if we wanted to make the top um go up and down the blow is sighted in another room so you could actually uh, change the blows because some of them make quite a racket um, that's what it looks like in real life um this is Measurement was done with um, 0, 1 dB, uh, two channel, noise and vibration, plus one measurement set up. This here is to measure um, the pressure on each side of the control valve with these two sensors here. So you can see that the pressure in the reservoir is about nearly 800 PA. This is some of the original um, observations. This is the frequency spectrum of the test pipe, so you can see it's full of harmonics every uh, 1k up to 20k. And if you look at the um, and expand, go in and look at the fundamental and expand it, you can see that on each side, the fundamental is two sidebands, uh, which um, are about 10 hertz on each side of the fundamental and if then you then look at what's happening on the reservoir top you can see the difference between um, the red which is with the blower on or with the, the pipe connected to the blower uh, and then the green which is when the pipe connected to the blower is seven so effectively it's hand blown like it used to be so you can see there's very, very little reservoir top vibration. Unfortunately, weighted and sprung reservoirs don't behave the same. They behave like a mass sprung system. But the weighted system, if you actually change the wind pressure, you will actually change the resonant frequency. So you can see this graph here, we've got 50 millimeters wind pressure at the extreme right and under 20 millimeter water wind pressure water gauge at extreme left so you can see as we move along and increase the wind pressure by just adding weights we change the resonant frequency or we ch and we change the amount of uh, vibration of the reservoir top which is the thing that is important for the sprung reservoir once you've actually got the reservoir top the, the lid Mass. that sets the resonant frequency so you can change the wind pressure and you will not change the resonant frequency at all so we look at some floor comparisons now we i tested because i had 
seven blowers, I've listed eight, and the, the one that you see with, in red at the spiker line, that's the leaf blower. So I've put that in for a bit. And you can see that, generally speaking, that they're all doing roughly the same thing. Um, but they seem to separate into two things, high and low speed. Well, organ builders have known for a long time that low speed blowers seem to be better than high speed blowers. So this, answer, this substantiates that, apart from one particular one where uh, this one here is in fact a low speed blower. Sorry, that's a, sorry that is a high speed blower. Uh, and that is the Taylor blow from Leicester. Nothing to do with me, but it's a Taylor blow. Um, we looked at the, uh, the kind of comparison between top and uh, reservoir top vibrations for um, weighted and sprung, and you can see they're totally different. The, you've got this low frequency, 10 hertz, which is the natural frequency uh, for a weighted reservoir, whereas for a sprung reservoir, it's, it's roughly double. So the same wind pressure, if one's 10, the other's about 20. And you can see that they, they just do, they're totally different curves. And you can see the difference between um, low speed, 1500, and uh, 3000 high speed. Just a bit about psychoacoustics. Generally speaking, the uh, sprung into the, more into the roughness area, 15 to 300 hertz, whereas the uh, weighted is in both areas. So we've got this combination of low frequency modulation, and we've got this area also it's between 15 and um, 300 hertz. This is a weighted and sprung combination, so you can kind of tune the reservoir, throw some of the weights off, and add some springs. And you can see that you can un improve reservoir top vibration. This green uh, plot shows you uh, when you've got 70, roughly 73% weights to springs. And the, the resonant frequency there is about 11 hertz. I then looked at the possibility of using an attenuator or something to put in the system to, to try and get rid of the flutter. And you can see that the um, purple is in fact the, what happens when you uh, use an attenuator. So you can listen to the two. Um, Out. And that's with. Can you hear the difference? Can, can you, the second one is better. Is that right? It's cleaner. Is that right? Sorry? It, it, it was sharper, yeah. So you can see um, that um, putting in some form of uh, air damper or attenuator does uh, have an effect. And going through the uh, organ survey, which they, the organ builders took a long time to come back, so a lot of work had been done. And it was apparent from the, um, the organ survey that a lot of organs just didn't have any flutter at all. And I just couldn't understand it. And then I started to look at the control valves that they had. And what then became apparent is that the control valve is very important in um, generating this, uh, this kind of flutter. So you can see the direct comparison between the internal valve, which is in the reservoir, the flutter making machine that I've got, which is in blue, and the guillotine valve, which is the simple chop valve that you saw, and the roller blind. So um, that needs some more kind of uh, research doing on there just to see how far that goes. Last thing is thank you.
Questions? The location of the organ that was... Oh, there was 83. They were all uh, just sent out um, the survey to 22 organ builders, hoping to get 100 back. Um, and uh, in the end, I managed to get 83 back from eight. One gentleman sent me 32 because he thought he had to do 100. <laughs> he, was quite, he was quite pleased when I told him, no, I'm only after six. So, and they, they chose them at random. They were t small, typical, two manual and pedal organs. Um, the oldest was 1864, and the youngest is probably only um, 10 years old. Or, the, most of them, you see, would be rebuilt. They would have been worked on in the last 10 years. They, wouldn't, they weren't brand new organs, because you would have had a different kind of wind system. Well, in this slide, uh, the files, yeah, it's what's called the monkey's tail. So it's pivoted. One bit goes to the reservoir that moves it up and down, and the other one um, goes onto the this kind of flat valve. But there are several kind of internal valves. I mean, I think a lot of organ builders um, have got their own ideas. But this 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 was what was in this reservoir that I managed to. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So these, those are the Well, what I managed to do is I managed to fit the two external valves, which is the roller blind and the guillotine valve, on the outside of this reservoir so that the internal one wasn't working. So, so I could make a direct comparison. Sorry? There is no downside to the cell. There, there is, I mean, I'm only looking at what I call steady state. There's nothing happening here. There's no wind actually going anywhere. Because the, I've only got a little pipe and it doesn't take much wind at all. So the blower's almost stalled. Um, There is, there is possibly a, a, a dynamic problem. Uh, we may have solved steady state, but um, the problem is about these guillotine valves, they are heavy, because you've got air blowing against it on a face, and there's stiction, and the thing can't stick. It's got to have enough weight, and usually the, the, the valve's made out of a piece of lead or steel that might be quarter or... Uh, Sorry, six millimeters or ten millimeters thick. It's about could be 150 millimeters wide by probably 200 millimeters. So it's fairly heavy. And the problem is that um, that's why they're so good at isolating. What you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate the bore and the reservoir to stop it vibrating. Um, and that's how the early system didn't have the problem because they had no blow. And the regulation on the early organs was by hand, and you watch the telltale go up and down. Whereas now, the regulation is by this kind of control valve. So the control valve is important. And I suspect that um, we're going to do some, talking, thinking about doing some dynamic tests, to see just whether or not um, the guillotine valve causes a huge pitch change when you play a big chord or you have big demand. The thing can't operate fast enough so you get a pressure drop and that's something that you can't be tolerating, obviously. Um, so the effect you're getting is some steady flow in. Yeah. That unsteady flow kind of originally the blower Reservoir is kind of resonating. Yeah, from the reservoir. So, so you actually have steady air going into the reservoir. Yeah. Well, you, you, it's not it's not possible to have steady air. It depends what you call steady. Um, for most people, this would be very steady, but for organs, it's not. 
Um, because the other thing is about organs is because the note is continuous. Um, it's not like a piano or any other keyboard instrument. As soon as you uh, let go of the note, it disappears. Um, but with a pipe organ, if you hold the note down for 10 minutes, it'll hold it down for 10 minutes, and you can hear the difference in intonation between what's called the bearings, how the, the scale is, is laid down. So if you hold down a fifth, you will hear beating between the notes because they are tuned um, slightly flat, the fifths, uh, the fourths are tuned sharp. So if you then listen to a chord of um, C, E and D, you'll actually hear slight beats. So it's important that you, you don't kind of add to that when you're trying to tune, because you're tuning octaves and you're listening for beats. So it's important that you get the, the, the actual wind as steady as you can to any tuning. When you consider that the top notes are 8K fundamental and the speaking length of 10 millimeters, not easy to tune. Any other questions? Oh. What? Uh, I tried to keep it just half an hour. Now. That's hopefully, if you think that's understandable, part of the presentation for Cardi. Does it seem reasonable? There wasn't too much. I think it's important to know what's happening.